Hey guys, welcome back. It's Kristen with Kristen Live Acres. All of my returning subscribers, thank you so much. Love you guys bunches. If you've never been to my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell next to it so you don't miss any of my future videos. In today's video, I'm going to show you what I consider to be necessary in order to prep for SHTF. Shit hits the fan. So let's just go ahead and get right into the video. One more thing I want to mention when it comes to food that I don't think I mentioned in my long-term food storage video is that if you have even an acre, half an acre, or if you live in the county or in the country away from like neighbors that are like, you know, reach out and touch you, you might consider getting a small flock of chickens or ducks or geese or quail. Uh, they all lay eggs and you can them all so maybe you get some for meat and some for eggs just a thought if you have even more property you may consider a goat or a cow for milk cheese meat whatever you need but with that said done with food I believe that sanitation is the number one thing when it comes to preparing yourself for a grid down situation so I've got um, paper towels, which I'm not saying this is all you need. I just am trying to give you a visual of what it is you should get. Clearly, you're going to need more than four paper towel rolls. However, eventually your paper towel rolls are going to run out whether you buy four or 40. So lots of rags, a way to wash them, so very important. It's always good to start out with toilet paper, but again, no matter how much you get, eventually it's going to run out. It's not reusable. This is why I also have wipes here. Those are going to run out as well. But it's a good start until you get your family or whoever you're, you know, bugging in or bugging out with used to the idea of having to wipe with maybe a rag and then wash them. Or you can also put them in like a bucket of a little bit of bleach and vinegar. So this is just kind of a starter, and it would be great for a short-term fix, but for long-term, that's just kind of to ease everyone into the reality that you're gonna have to be more self-sustainable than purchasing these things because they're probably not gonna be available, and possibly there won't be any stores open. With that said, hand sanitizer is a great thing to buy. It's really hard to buy right now because we're still amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. If you cannot find rubbing alcohol, a great thing to do would buy, be to buy a huge thing of rubbing alcohol and a large thing of aloe vera. These are not the sizes I recommend. This is just what I had to show you visually. You mix these two together. I think it's mostly alcohol with, I want to say it's like 30, 70, 30, 70, pretty sure. You might want to Google that. But anyway, that is what his hand sanitizer is made of, so you can make your own. All right. Obviously, you're going to need a first aid kit. This is just a very basic one. Some people go a little further and they get more of like a trauma kit. I am a CPR uh, certified first responder, and so I do have the ability to do probably a little bit more than most of the people that aren't, but um, this is just a very basic kit. I can do basic stitches, I can do tourniquets, CPR, that kind of thing, but I um, haven't got my stash quite to that level yet. I'm sure I'll be doing another video where I go a little further in depth on those sort of things. But this is just kind of the basics. Um, water clearly is super important, so whether, wherever you're getting your water from, more than likely, if all systems are down, grid down situation, you're going to need to filter it. I'll start with the cheapest, which is the LifeStraw. I'm sure you've all heard of it. And it, I tried it earlier. It works great. The water tasted good. Um, and the cool thing is, you can actually use this and then dump the water into a container and continually do that. But you're going to minimize the amount of usage if you needed to take it, say, like in your bug out bag. This is 
less than $20. Then I've got the Sawyer Squeeze, which is one step above the Mini. Some people prefer, prefer the Mini um, because I have two children. I prefer a little bit of the bigger one. It comes with two 32 ounce bags, a straw, and also a function where you can attach it to a bucket and it comes with these little, not that one, it comes with a straw or you can attach it with uh, their little kit they have, an accessory kit you can purchase and it comes with all the fittings you need and even the proper size drill bit to make the proper size hole so that you can actually fill the whole bucket with water. So you're just continuously, this is here, it's just, I mean, it, it's a downflow system. So this was $30 and, you know, it, it seems like every time I say something is a price, it goes up because everyone is a little bit of a panic mode. And even if you were not a prepper before, a lot of people are becoming one now. So get stuff while you can, and especially while you can afford it. The prices aren't ridiculously high. Okay, another thing you might want to do is have some kind of purification tablets. These are just Coleman drinking water purification tablets. They're called Potable Aqua with PA+. This is what you want to do if, say, you're collecting water from a well that may not be super clean, um, a river, a water, a lake, whatever water source you find and it seems really mucky, you want to use these first and then put it through your water filtration system. These are cheap. I think it was like $6 for the two of these and uh, if you want to do more research on them, you go for it. Okay. When it comes to like security and safety, obviously you're going to want some flashlights. I have a couple nicer ones that are big ones like the Magnum, but these I want to say are like Sierra something. They're just Walmart ones. They were a dollar. They come with the battery. I mean, you can't go wrong. Plus, you can change out the batteries. It takes three AAA batteries. A uh, dollar. I mean, if they go out after a couple weeks, I mean, that's worth it to me. These are great to like give to the kids if you have kids or you know like if one person has like the lantern and someone needs to use the restroom or go outside. So, and I will be taking you guys outside to show you more. This is just the stuff that I don't keep outside. So we'll get there in a minute. I also have these really cool UVC sanitizing ones. They are, oops, that one's gonna fall out of the box. They are really cool because they, and I can't, turn it on for you. I mean, it won't hurt the camera, but it'll probably hurt me because I've got a mirror behind me facing back that it can uh, severely damage your eyes. But waving this over an object for between 15 seconds to a minute, depending on what it is and how dirty you think it is, actually completely sanitizes it. I'm talking about doorknobs. Um, you don't want to use it on your skin. It cannot come in contact with your skin or your eyes. So you have to be very careful. But if you want to look them up, this one is by Capsule, K-A-P-S-U-L-E. I'll leave all the affiliate links in the description box below if you guys are interested. It wasn't super expensive. I mean, they're not cheap, but for what they do, and I think they said they have like a five-year warranty, maybe more. i got to look that up, but I'll put it in the info below. And these are also a USB rechargeable, which I'll get into in a little bit about... Uh, power sources. Let's see where we're at here. Uh, obviously, the, well, these are, what do they call these? I mean, it's basically like, like a TV torch, but it's a baby one. So you just fill it with citronella fluid and you continually fill it. And the wick is so long that you can actually kind of pull it up and trim it if you need to. And they were on clearance for 50 cents, so I got four of them. It's just nice when it's just one person sitting outside or you just need like a little bit. I've got larger citronella candles and all kinds of different um, bug off and stuff like that, but I thought for 50 cents, that's pretty cool. I already have the citronella refill thing, so why not? All right, on to when we're talking about um, staying safe. 
my number one recommendation is to stay in. Stay in your house. <clears throat> bug in, not bug out. It's always good to have a bug out bag just in case that for some reason it's necessary for you to leave your home. But the safest place you can be is in your home. So if you do decide to stay in your home, um, it's helpful to have all kinds of security things in place. No trespass. So when we're talking about bugging in and staying home and kind of making your home a fortress, you want to get some signs. It's just one of many deterrents that you can use. Sorry, my dogs are barking in the background. It's a rare quiet moment that happens in this house. Anyway, you can get some signs as deterrents. No trespassing or um, owner is armed. I love the one, it's really funny, that says, um, due to the rising cost of ammunition, a warning shot will no longer be fired. I think that's funny. Anyway, uh, beware of the dog, even if you don't have a dog. I happen to have two. I have a German Shepherd that is one level trained below a canine police dog. And then I have a Rottweiler who's going through uh, personal protection training. So they've got a grip and a bite on them they will not let go. So they're also great for giving you a warning sign when somebody is entering your property because they can hear way better than we can. And uh, they're just super sensitive to sound. You also may want to consider a security camera system. I have one, well I have two, one wired and some that are wireless. They alert me when somebody comes near my property. They record footage and they have a siren and I can also speak through the camera and the person can speak back. Not that I probably care what they have to say, but just say. All right. Uh, zip ties, super important. There's so many things you can do with these. I really don't think I need to go into it, but I mean, wh whether you're securing a hammock, securing a um, tarp, these are four inch in diameter, list three cable ties. I mean, you can hang a lot of weight from these puppies. What else? The multi-purpose tool, I just pulled them all out so y'all can see. I'm sure you know what a multi-purpose tool is. You've got a screwdriver, bottle opener, a serrated knife, a um, flat knife, and pliers. Okay. I also have a pocket knife and a pepper spray. Now, I have firearms and ammunition. However, I would not put those in the hands of my kids. So with that said, I have pepper spray and I have a stun gun. The stun gun, well, I don't have it yet. I've bought it. It should be here in the next couple days. It is the highest, it's like a police quality stun gun that will knock your ass over and give you more time, which is another deterrent. What you're looking for is time. Pepper spray stun gun, firearm, dogs, anything that you can use as a deterrent. If somebody's coming to do ill will to you or your home or your, your preparatory items, if there's a house right nearby that doesn't have any of those deterrents, they're going to choose that house. So all of these things are wonderful to have on hand. Of course, your flashlights. Um, I think I mentioned that. A shortwave radio. This is a ham radio. Now you can listen. You can't transmit unless you are a certified tech operator. You can get that license, it's less than $100. I've been looking into it. And um, you can listen to weather, you can listen to the police, ambulance, fire, etc. Very important to have. It also has a USB cable to where you can charge it if you have a generator, which we will get into when I go outside. It's The weather's getting pretty bad and now it's getting dark out. It's thundering and lightning and raining, but I'm going to try to film this for you guys, so we'll see how that goes. What do we have left? Oh, well, seeds, because of course, um, I know this isn't really about food today, but having a huge amount, I mean, I'm talking like this whole bag is full of seeds of all different kinds, because if, you know, SHTF is a problem, 
and a purse, you're going to have to grow your own food. And not only that, sorry about the dogs, not only will you have to grow your own food, but if there's anything in here that you bought that you don't like, you can use it for a bartering item. Okay, last but not least for inside is batteries. I have D, C's, AA, AAA, 9 volt, uh, 2016, 2032, 2025. I mean, I've purchased a lot of solar items, just like my security cameras. They're solar, they don't have power. Um, if I can get decent lighting, I'm going to take you outside and finish this video. Now on to my outdoor supply cabinet or room. It is still storming. I apologize for the lighting, but bringing up lighting when the grid goes down or you have a loss of power, you're going to have to have some kind of light. So I've got a whole box full here of candles, matches, lighters. Um, I put the matches in a waterproof case. And then I've got citronella candles for obviously bugs and, you know, all the different kinds of bug repellent. You also want to make sure that whatever you're using to cook, whether it's a charcoal or gas grill, that you have plenty of charcoal, gas, propane, whatever it is. And if you have a generator, which we will get to at the end, you may be able to plug in a crock pot or like a George Foreman grill, which is handy. Next is sanitary items. So you've got plenty of bleach. This is not all of my supplies, but a good majority of them. Uh, dish soap, obviously to clean clothes, dishes, hands, whatever, sanitary purposes. I've got vinegar, rubbing alcohol, face masks, which are here. I've got gloves and then the regular like disposable masks. Uh, I mentioned bug spray. And then I want to talk about power tools. So it's important, like I said, if you have a power source to keep a, some kind of drill, saw, axe, multi-purpose tool. Again, I showed you that earlier. And maybe even a chainsaw. Items to barter would be any kind of tobacco product. Whether you use them or not is not the issue. It's what do people want that they can't get. Um, you know, chewing tobacco or dip or whatever you want to call it, cigarettes, liquor, and get the highest proof liquor and get them in the small bottles because you don't want to barter a huge bottle of expensive liquor for whatever they have. Do them in the small bottles. You can always give them 10 if you need to, but it's better to get them in the small bottles. Um, other things would be seeds. They're great for bartering. Propane, fuel, gas. You know, you just never know. It's always good to have as much as you can on hand. And if you're bartering that stuff, you better make sure you're getting something really good in return. All right, if you have babies or pets, obviously you want to do cloth diapers, cloth reusable wipes, bottles, pacifiers, uh, pets. Obviously you need pet food, water for the pets, possibly a kennel or crate if, you know, for some reason your house is not secure or you don't have a fence. And then other resources that I would suggest would be like, uh, if you're not an expert gardener, get a book on gardening. There is several books that I have that I really like and I'll link them below. One is like self-sufficiency, like forgotten skills, I believe. And then um, there is a made from scratch cookbook. So all of those things that you're storing up, you have to know what to do with them. And if there's no internet, and you don't know just off the top of your head it'd be nice to have a little cookbook to look through and then the last but not least would be like a first aid medical book if you so let me pull the camera down or well, let's see up there is my solar lanterns they charge in two hours in sunlight extension cords bungee cords chain emergency ponchos heating blankets um, all the way down to paper products cups utensils Toilet paper, paper towels, heavy duty contractor trash bags, bowls, plates, lots of charcoal. I've got um, tumbleweed starters, charcoal lighter, gas, you name it. So, you know, and then of course this deep freezer is pretty full of lots of frozen foods. And the last thing, well, minus the generator, is to show you this. This is, dun -dun -dun -dun, very cheap. 
I think you all know what this is used for. This goes in your dash of your car to protect it from getting um, too much sun damage and cracking. But you know what else it's good for? You can put this in the windshield of your car and put food behind it and dehydrate it. Like you can dehydrate fruit, you can warm up with this, you can cook things if you have to from the um, sun reflecting off of it. This is a great thing to have. I got this at Walmart for $3. So, I mean, you really can't beat that. <clears throat> I don't currently use one in my car, probably should, but let me turn the camera around and I'm gonna show you my new generator. All right, guys, so this is my brand new, never used generator. I'm so excited. It's a Westinghouse. It had 4.75 star reviews on Amazon. However, I did not buy it from Amazon. I bought it from Home Depot. That way, if something's wrong with it, I can take it back locally and not worry about trying to ship this heavy thing back. So this is a hybrid. It's a dual gas or propane, which is nice because if one is harder to get than the other, it can run on either. It runs its best on gas, but it runs fairly well still on propane. It has wheels underneath that I haven't set up, and I haven't set up the cords to go to the propane or gas. I've got a really nice heavy-duty uh, extension cord cable, which keeps it from tripping. And I got this little cover, which, you know, I don't know. Little things excite me. Anyway, I plan on doing a lot more videos like this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And make sure you subscribe and hit that like button and share if there's anyone you know that might enjoy these videos. Until next time, I'll see y'all later.